In the last few lectures, we discussed the Whitney embedding theorem. But it is interesting not just finding an embedding from our manifold to an Euclidean space, but understanding whether that property is dense in some spaces of differential maps. And why is that? Because if we assume that that's the case, then actually, in order to find an embedding, we can suppose that it is as close as we want to a fixed differentiable map. And then it's not going just to be an embedding, but more likely than not, it's going to share some properties with that fixed map. And that's the reason it's interesting. That's the topic that we are going to discuss today. Let us say that the Whitney embedding theorem can be interpreted as an approximation theorem. Consider a map from M to a R to M plus one. Let's consider the case of embeddings. The case of immersions is treated in the same way. Okay. This map, maybe, is not an embedding. But we know that there exists an embedding. Let's assume, for instance, let's assume that M is compact and R is greater or equal than two. But these hypotheses are not really necessary. It's just that uh, we are proving a simple version of the Whitney embedding theorem. Uh, and uh, what we have is that there exists an embedding H from M to R to M plus one. Right? Now, we can consider a map uh, G from M to R for M plus two, sends a point X into FX, uh, HX, okay? This map is an embedding. Essentially, because H is an embedding. Okay, and now the map F can be obtained from the map G by post composing with a sequence of projections, right? So um, uh, if we consider with uh, the elements of the uh, canonical by basis of this uh, vector space, and we consider the projections. Okay, this, these projections are just eliminating the components of uh, H. What, we are just eliminating the last uh, 2M plus one components. This um, composition is going to be just F, right? But now we can change a little bit these projections. That's something that we pointed out during the proof of Whitney embedding theorem. G is actually an embedding and we can find a linear projection into our K, uh, sorry, for M plus one, that is still an embedding. And, the, and you, we can choose a, a point P, okay, here to, um, we, can, we, can, we can consider a point P as, as near to E to M plus two as we want because uh, P has to satisfy that it does not belong to the union of two images that are nowhere dense. And so we can choose P as close to any point as we want. 
So we do that. And uh, we now we can choose another projection that it is very close to to the to to the projection that uh, uh, we have here, okay, and and so on and so on. And in this way, okay, we are going to get a map which is going to be p prime, which is a composition of projections and indeed a projection, and the composition of a, yeah, of G and P prime is here, I don't know, it's a, uh, okay, let's try to clean this up a little bit. Something like this. And the issue is that P prime is as close as we want to this projection. So even if we didn't define yet very well what it is going to be, what it is being close uh, for uh, maps, for differentiable maps, because we didn't define yet a topology in, in, in the function spaces, in the map spaces, uh, it is clear that uh, this is, is, is going to be, uh, it's clear that this works well because we are just replacing uh, the composition of G with this projection with the composition of the same map and another projection that it is very close to uh, this one. Indeed, if, if you look at the coefficients of the corresponding matrices, the coefficients of uh, this by prime can be uh, considered as close to the coefficients of this projection as we want. So yeah, that's, that's going to be a good approximation of F. And in that way, by deforming a little bit, we obtain a map that is very close to F and that is an embedding. Of course, we're not going to you can to do the details, but if you consider here to M, since uh, we uh, we can have an immersion from M to R to M, you can repeat uh, the rest of the proof, and you're going to have an approximation of F that is an immersion. Okay. Uh, in this sense, the Whitney approximation theorem, or, or, or let's say the approximation that is provided by the Whitney theorem is optimal, it's sharp. Why is that? Imagine for a minute that you have a map from the line to the line, for instance, a C infinity map, such that the image of zero is equal to zero, the image of two is equal to zero, and the image of one is equal, for instance, to one. If we make a picture of uh, the graph of such a function, it's going to be maybe something like this. For instance, there are many functions that, uh, and there are many possible graphs, of course. If we actually consider now a function g that is close to f, mm -hmm. the, the, the graph of the function g is going to be something like this, maybe. Okay? But what we still have is that. Uh, the local maximum of G at the interval zero one is attained at an interior point. Of course, this property implies that the derivative of G at the point X zero is equal to zero. So 
G is not an immersion. Okay, but uh, what this uh, actually uh, tells us is that if we consider a map from the line to the line, we cannot deform it just a little bit so that it is an immersion, okay? We cannot do that. And so uh, the result of approximation does not work if approximation by, with, by immersions, it does not work when we consider here uh, one, that when the dimension of the target space is equal to one. But we know that uh, it works when the dimension of the target space is two, because uh, two is uh, two times one, which is the dimension of the source space. So in that sense, uh, the dimension of the target space is sharp, okay, for approximation purposes. Okay, now let's consider another example uh, that is going, uh, we're going to discuss the sharpness for embeddings. So let's consider now a map from the line to the plane, okay, that it is an immersion and whose image is something like this. Here we have that this map is not an embedding. It's not because uh, the pre-image of this point has two pre-images. Sorry, so that, that point has two pre-images. So the, 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 the map F is not injective. So it's, it's not an embedding. Okay. But what happens if we consider a map G close to F? What happens is that here we have a transversal intersection and transversal intersections are stable. So we're going still to have a transversal intersection. In particular, that implies that G is non-injective and so G is not an embedding, okay? So we cannot deform a little bit immersions from the line to the plane so that they become embeddings. But again, uh, the Whitney embedding theorem tells us that in order to do this, we need here that the target space has dimension three because three is two times one plus one. So in that way, this uh, dimension of the target space is sharp. It's sharp for approximation purposes. Okay, we'll discuss uh, these approximation theorems in a more rigorous way later on. In the last few lectures, we introduced and proved the Whitney embedding theorem, but this is just our first approach to the subject. Later on, we will show a more general result we will see that the theorem still applies to CR manifolds with R greater or equal than one, and that the compactness hypothesis is no longer necessary. In our next lecture, we are going to treat a completely different topic. We are going to introduce manifolds with boundary. Thank you for your attention.